Hello and welcome to another episode of Ashley Hayden's Political Breakdown, a show where me and one or two guests discuss the week's news that is utterly, utterly pointless, but it's worth the waste of someone's time. This week, my guest is... Hello, my name is Carmina Biriana. Fantastic. Right, let's start with the news that I know that you've brought along as well. The Church of England has come out and tucked away some opinions this week with regards to sex and who should be allowed to have it. Absolutely. So well, they, they've, they've stated that sex belongs uh, only within a heterosexual marriage and that sex in gay or straight civil partnerships falls short of God's purpose for human beings. Now, are all gods perverts? Are all gods perverts? No, I, didn't, I don't think... Hashtag not all gods... Obviously, that's obvious. You, you, th you think that there are certain gods that aren't perverts? I am not au fait with all gods, but I would imagine that there may be some who are not perverts. Are the three main Abrahamic uh, uh, gods perverts? Because seemingly all of the religions of these three mm -hmm. love to say what you should and shouldn't do in the bedroom. This is true, but that doesn't necessarily follow that those are three separate gods. Oh, no, no, I mean, they're all the... They're all the same God, but it's three different interpretations of those gods. And as we were just talking about bias before, I think we can see how one little bias that happens in the Bronze Age can then be magnified. So now we have three distinct interpretations of that. In fact, four, if you include the Church of England, which, as I was raised Catholic, I don't really recognise. I mean, it's, it's, it is the, the divorce uh, religion, so... yeah. Potentially, they shouldn't be saying fuck all about marriage yeah, at you, all. You could argue that. Or you could argue that as they've done it twice, as you know, the founder of their church did it twice, maybe they'd be more of an authority than your average Catholic. So, in this country, uh, I mean, first off, what, what's your opinion of the Church of England coming out and saying this? It, honestly, yes. it's irrelevant. Um, my initial reaction was, what part of God's mysterious plan is this? That was my immediate, you know, mm -hmm. um, response. And then, and then I had a few people kind of commenting, listening to a little bit of feedback from other people. Some people suggesting that, you know, their imaginary friend says something different. Some people suggesting that, you know, well, they're just going to keep doing the unsanctioned sex just in case because it's still quite good. Well, um, like what they said, um, for Christians' marriage... That is the lifelong union between a man and woman uh, contracted with the making of vows remains the proper contract for sexual or context for sexual activity. Oh, but they didn't actually call any other kind of sex perverse. They just said for it to be proper sex, it has to be done within a heterosexual Well, marriage. no, they, they said it wasn't within uh, a God's, I think we said it before, yeah. God's uh, plan. Yeah. Right. Uh, sexual so relationships outside heterosexual marriage uh, are regarded as falling short of falling God's short. purpose for human beings. Yeah, so, okay. I mean, it's not that they're saying that it's wrong. They're saying that you're just not a proper human being if you do it. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, or just that there's a lot of sex that goes on in the world that is falling short of heterosexual... But isn't that all of the fun ones? Yeah. I mean, otherwise it's just like missionary and... Then you just Which apologize. is another thing that the Church of England is quite fond of, missionaries. Yes. So, I don't know, I think um, I think it's okay to have sex that falls short with enough practice. It can be really okay. But as, as a society, should we allow uh, any religion, especially in this country, mm -hmm. to uh, give their opinions at all? So because we're, we're now, a sec the latest uh, st uh, studies came out saying that we are a predominantly secular nation. Yeah, but then with secularism, that isn't anti-religious, it's freedom from religion. Well, well yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not anti-religion, it's anti, it's uh, like religion with a home. Right, uh, um, so I have no problem with the Church of England saying whatever they like, because I do believe in free speech. On this occasion, I think, there are some people who could take this to logical extremes and then suggest that it is immoral to engage in any other kind of sex. But I don't know if that's, I don't know enough about this to know if that's specifically what the Church of England said. They've just said, look at me defending the Church of England. They've just said that 
it's not part of God's plan. That doesn't mean I mean, it's immoral. Who, who? I mean, this this always gets me with God. I mean, I don't, I don't believe in a God. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to, on your way. Sure. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. As long as it doesn't affect anyone else. Yeah. That's my that's my big issue with religion. Yeah. Like, you, listen, you want to believe that a cabbage spoke to you on a Monday and a carrot on a Tuesday. You do what the fuck you cool. like. Yeah. As long as the fucking cabbage and carrot didn't tell you to go kill everyone. Yeah. Or you're or you're doing but wars that's... on on behalf of fucking uh, your god. Yeah. Or that you're taking away freedoms on behalf of your god, or you're looking down on someone else, which is going to treat people differently and discriminate because of your cunting religion. So I don't have a problem with people looking down on other people as long as it doesn't translate into institutionalized oppression but it, 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 it always will do. it will do yeah it probably will do but as you said we're in, we're now moving towards a secular country so how much influence does the church of england have over the sexual habits of too the much population uh, i mean uh, do you personally know of anyone who's been affected by this news who is now going to stop having unsanctioned I mean, well, this, this news came out just the other day. Okay. I mean, it's not going to... But people who have been affected with regards to their uh, sex or their yeah. sexual orientation with regards to society as a whole yeah. because or they're, like, they're still run by the Church of England. Or their yes. unique fetishes that, you know, I don't like to judge. So, so it depends. I personally don't know of anyone who has been traumatised by this because it seems like, well, that's just something that uh, an old person would say. Well, let's say you're uh, you're homosexual, right? And you believe in a god, and you're brought up as Church of England. Yeah. And the Church of England, your religion, mm-hmm. is unwilling to uh, uh, treat you the same oh, as mate. someone else because of your, which, which happens was, constantly. I was raised Catholic. You don't need to tell me. I, no, I'm yeah, very familiar with how it works, which is why my initial response was, well, this piece of news is irrelevant to my life and quite a lot of other people's, it sounds, as well. I think it's pretty awful if you are gay or bisexual um, or um, do or pansexual, you know, the many, many different um, sexual expressions or, you know, sexuality expressions. It is probably quite shit if you are one of those and you also believe in god through the church of england that's probably quite a difficult position to be in yeah i I personally don't know of anyone who's in that situation i can't keep up with all of the different types of sexuality i don't think you have to unless you're interested in it i don't think you have to good as long as i don't actually have to because there are so many of it i'm this i'm this i'm this i don't give a fuck mate I don't care about you enough to give a fuck what your sexual fetish is. You, you fuck whoever, the, whoever you want, just don't get any liquids on me. When was the last time you had sex? A, a, enough time for me not <laughs> want to talk about it. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not what you'd say good with people. Okay, um, really? I know, I hide it well. <laughs> uh, although, I'm never going to get this new virus going about uh, right. because I don't see enough people. The coronavirus. Yeah, I spend enough time on my own for the week researching the worst things that happen in the week mm. and then I only see people to do this mm. or gig. Right. And they're all lonely fuckers as well, whoever a I gig with. A lot of them, yeah. So they're not going to be f- seeing anyone, are they? And so it's, it's such a tight-knit community, yeah. it's going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, it's just Never going to get it. It's just a comic and they're plus one. I, mate, I don't do bringers. <laughs> Fuck off. I love a bringer. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, but that, that suggests you have friends. Yeah. I don't. I mean, there's some cunt. He can go fuck off. He <laughs> likes bringers, little prick. Um, all right, next news story. Um, according to a report, a, uh, a points based immigration system uh, could be in place by the end of 2020 in this country, which is two years uh, earlier than was originally planned. Now, what's your uh, views on a points based immigration system so they've been talking about bringing in an australian style points based points based immigration system into this country for over a decade yeah and the reason that i've always found it quite amusing is that on the points based system we'd actually have been letting in a lot more immigrants than if we didn't have it we let in all sorts of people um for good reason i think i'm in favor of immigration um and um open borders um, I think it's just window dressing. Do you, do you know you don't think that they're actually going to do it? They might, um, but we already let in people 
inv and in actually in some cases invite people um, and there are lots of exemptions and there is also some points that you have to you know there are some uh, checks that you have to pass in order to in order to um, move into this country from abroad so I think that it's not going to dramatically change things that is the that from are. the EU as well no I think if you're from the EU you get a degree of freedom of movement but there are still some restrictions on that oh yes yeah, certainly I mean you're not a you're not able to uh, claim uh, uh, benefits for a certain amount of time if you don't have a job in a certain amount of time they can kick you out mm -hmm. uh, all of this stuff and certainly when you're uh, outside of the EU it's a lot harder to uh, just come in it depends the for economic migration yes but if you're a refugee or asylum seeker you are allowed in and then they put you in a holding pen like a sort of prison yes yes um, while they abuse you and test you and check that you check your teeth or whatever and to make sure you're the you out. and then they send you back to be tortured and murdered in your own country and then they cut off a leg just to check how old you are yep just in check case the rings on the inside that's, uh, that's how i understand you do check for uh, child refugees yep. well, i hope so otherwise i've I've made some mistakes in the yeah, past. You asked them who their favourite gladiator was um, and if they give the wrong answer. I mean, if they say shadow, you know they're a drug addict. <laughs> right. uh, if they say hunter, you know they're a cunt. Um, yeah. I mean, rhino is the only real answer to that, isn't it? No, jet. Jet? Yeah. Yep, jet. I'll go for jet. <laughs> I'm fine with jet. <laughs> fine with jet. I've got no qualms with jet. Jet was, jet was a jet was good the best. time. Yeah. Good time. Uh, is Australia the country that we should be looking at hmm. around the world with regards to how immigration should be done? Their immigration policy and history is complicated because they were colonised mostly by criminals. So yes. that's, that's difficult. But that, I mean, but that was a couple of hundred years ago. That was a while ago. ago. And I do think that you should... Um, I want to say um, move on from that. Well, it's not for me to move on. It's oh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying you. I'm saying the country. Right. Yeah, I think it's, it's challenging when a country's rules and regulations and laws um, are set up, you know, from the ground up, as Australia's were. And again, going back to bias, the people who were writing those original laws weren't factoring in the rights of the indigenous population um, or even the rights of economic migrants coming in because that wasn't really their concern, unless they were already wealthy or prisoners. Well, I mean, they have their own fucking island that they uh, keep they refugees they on to that, yeah. die. Um, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's what they do. I mean, to, uh, immigrants, especially like refugees and stuff like that, mm. they put them onto an island, they leave them there in torturous conditions, uh, let them die, and then there's no more problem because they're dead. Uh, and all you have to do is dig a grave, and that is a lot easier than paperwork. Um, I guess so. It's going to get harder as time goes on, if it's depending on the size of the island. I mean, uh, well, yeah, but they were, they were, I mean, you get to a point where, no, I won't say that. <laughs> I won't say that. Even, even I have uh, levels that I'm not willing to <laughs> go down to, and what I was going to say there was one of them right um with uh, if we carry on with uh, immigration mm -hmm. i find i mean immigration is this this country's fucking catnip we love uh, it oh no, do it we do we love it do we hate it is it like well, well, we, well we we love to talk about it but yeah. we, it's like the weather we love to talk about it but we hate what it is mm. um but like uh, boris johnson has been over uh, in africa uh, right. In the past week, was he invited there, or did he just turn no, up? No, he, he he was invited to speak to uh, the majority. Uh, there was like twenty or thirty uh, African presidents and prime ministers, right. um, and he promised a new UK immigration policy that will put people before passports. Uh, right. This was his first set piece speech of 2020, and he said that the benefits of um, uh, whatever word I've got there, uh, trade, that's the fucking word, mm. uh, the benefits of trade with a post-Brexit Britain mm. uh, to a gathering of African leaders. Mm. Now, what do you think he's talking about when he says people before passports? That they're going to relax regulation on migrants from Africa to come and work in Britain? I reckon that 
every member of the Brexit party's head would actually explode if coming after Brexit, what we did would allow more Africans into the country. I think it would be one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen in your fucking life. Well, there's two things here. There's the Brexit party and there's Brexit voters. I think Brexit yes. voters uh, no, 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 Brexit party. Well, Brexit voters... Not so much, because I think that there is a wide-ranging reasons yeah. for why people voted well, Brexit. Well, the reason that I say that is that it assumes that the motivations of the Brexit party were simply immigration, when actually I think it was specifically splitting away from the EU, and then that needs to be... The, the numbers of people coming in and out of the country still needs to maintain a particular level in order for us to tax um, things properly, to fund like services that are currently running in this country and to do the jobs that Brits don't really want to do. So you think of the, uh, the Brexit party and say Brexit voters mm. say uh, are going to be happy if we keep immigration at the uh, plus 100,000 no. level. So I think the Brexit party will have to be okay with that because that's what they've negotiated and the Brexit, Brexit voters, let nothing. me finish, Brexit voters will be unhappy with that because the way that the Brexit vote was campaigned was largely on immigration. I don't think that your average Brexit voter, even though there are a multitude of them, I don't think that your average Brexit voter is in favour of immigration from any country. The Brexit party have negotiated nothing. No, well, no. It's a shame, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. Such, a, so such a missed opportunity. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, arguably the... Uh, with uh, the potential investigation into uh, the Tories offering uh, uh, peerages for the Brexit Party to set set down or to sit out on a couple of uh, like three two hundred two hundred uh, potential seats, potentially that. But in actual in what they've actually done, mm. they've done nothing. They've no. had no say. Was that the point? Absolutely. That was the point, wasn't it? What was the what was the goals of the Brexit Party? The the goals of the Brexit Party was to get Brexit done. Right. Oh, um, oh easy. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that was it. It was to get Brexit done, but not in a way that uh, is Boris Johnson's uh, signed withdrawal agreement, which is, of course, signed this week right. and signed off uh, 23, to th 23 to 4 or 24 to 3. It was signed off at the European Parliament mm. uh, yesterday, I think, right. or the day before. Uh, so it's been signed off on both sides. Mm -hmm. Um so Brexit will be happening. Mm. So we've got 11 months uh, <laughs> to do everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. Mm. So that means potentially we're going to do nothing. Only tariffs. That's, that's what we've we're going to... We've had since 2016, if not before then, to start drafting a whole bunch of stuff, which never happened. So I think that um, the reason that Boris Johnson and the people who fund his party are quite comfortable with not really doing anything is because there's another motive there, um, something about um, like where rich people hide their money and the EU regulations on that. So, And I feel that um, African nations are probably um, in the interest of getting as much um, investment in infrastructure into them as possible are probably going to be quite comfortable with Britain laundering money through um, some of those um, African nations, but at the moment, London in a way that is EU wouldn't be. Yeah, but uh, London is the uh, money laundering capital of the world, mm -hmm. and uh, Scotland is very big on money laundering mm -hmm. because of the uh, it's uh, called the SLP, which is a Scottish uh, Limited Partnership, I think. Right. Um, and that is used a lot for money laundering as mm. well. But I you mean can't just money launder in one place. You need to have places around to spread the load and to clean the money. Yeah. Um, but I mean, London is so good at it because it still connects, uh, at the moment, still connects all around to everywhere. And uh, all you need to do is look at the buildings. Yeah, so, um, if, we, so if we have to stop connecting with... Um, any EU countries that are currently complicit in that, then it means we need to find other ways of cleaning that money. And so Africa as a continent, as how many countries are there in Africa? There's loads. So that, 50 something, so that opens up an entire new market for way and ways that we can launder our money. Mm. And they might even have some innovations that we haven't thought of yet. Well, uh, hopefully, because one of the things that uh, Boris Johnson was speaking about 
uh, and arguably the only good thing that he he said when he was over there was regards to uh, the UK moving away from uh, coal and mm. helping uh, the uh, uh, African uh, countries also to move away from uh, using coal as an energy source. Mm. The irony of that is that uh, the UK has, even as early uh, as late as last year, spent quite a lot of money helping uh, African uh, countries to build coal mines and yeah. everything else well, for we don't, energy. We don't want to compete with them, do we? Well, I mean, so if we encourage them to get away from that, then we don't have to compete with them on it. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of the world, isn't that like the most the most important thing for a lot of countries do to do? Do you think Boris Johnson cares about the environment? I do not think he gives a shit about the environment, but I do think that he at least has to look like it. Yeah, and uh, what better way than to stifle competition business competition with other countries for an industry that has died out in this country 30 years ago but i mean in terms of uh, coal i mean you d just look uh, yesterday no, thursday yesterday thursday uh, i mean this is metaphorical and bullshit but uh, the doomsday clock right. was reset <laughs> yeah. to 100 seconds before midnight what date uh, no, it's, uh, it was yesterday, the day before. It, it's like once a year, oh. moves over. And it's the closest it's ever been to midnight now, ever. Um, what, does it, what does it actually measure? The doomsday clock is uh, done by uh, some scientists every year, once a year, yeah. to say how close we are to annihilation. Oh, okay. 12 o'clock is annihilation. Annihilation by what? Uh, just, just human annihilation. Just it, human. It takes everything just in. Just human so jokes. Well, yeah, because <laughs> it takes into account of, um, uh, like, climate change is one of the things it looks at. Nuclear uh, weapons, cyber, uh, AI, everything that we're doing to help ourselves get mm. to a point where we are going to all die. And mm. uh, it is suggesting... The scientists are saying that we are as close as we've ever been to killing ourselves. Well, that's just going to be true because of the passage of time. You know, that's. Do you, do you do you think that we're always heading towards the end, and there's no way of moving back? Is you ever get two steps forward, one step back, or is yeah. it just constant charging through fucking walls I to mean our the demise? Only, the only thing that's certain in human life is death, right? Oh, that and taxes, yeah. Well, not for not for everyone, not for Amazon. Well, I mean, <laughs> there's, there's, yeah, I mean, imagine not being able to fuck it. You, you never have to pay tax, but Saudi Arabia still hack your phone. Mm. How can you get that amount of money and have Saudi Arabia hack your phone? I think Saudi Arabia have got quite a lot of money as well. Yeah, but I mean, come on. I would, yeah, I mean, it's, I, 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 I put the Facebook post up uh, about if I had his amount of money, yeah. no one would hack my phone. I mean, to a point... It's not just about the money he has. It's the reason why someone would want to hack his phone in the first place. Uh, so, I, mean, I mean, I was, I was no about to libel him then, but... Yeah, I mean, there might, be, there might be some reasons. I have no idea. Why I did write um, a set about Bezos um, that he was... There was a very brief period... So he's been the richest man in the world for some time. And there was a brief period where he was not the richest man in the world. And I think Bill Gates took over for a very short period of time while Jeff Bezos, or just after Jeff Bezos and his wife divorced, and she got quite a lot in the settlement. Mm. Well, that was the biggest uh, thing. It was, it was billions she got, yeah, wasn't it? She, yeah, she did all right out of it. Good for her. I, I mean, certainly, they're the, they're the uh, divorce laws. So. Yeah. Um, he's, a, he's a super villain. I, I reckon all billionaires are super villains. There must have been something that made him interesting enough to want to hack into his phone. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the money. Yeah, and it's and why it was done by Saudi Arabia and not by the Sun. The like Sun is in the newspaper. The newspaper. Because the Sun don't have that fucking connection. They don't have that connection anymore. So are the Sun paying Saudi Arabia to do it for them? I mean, the Sun's doing fuck all, apart from lying out of their hole. Right, I mean but they're the not hacking... Bezos' phone, they're getting Saudi Arabia to do it for them. You reckon the sun's more powerful than Saudi Arabia? I don't know. I just wonder why Saudi Arabia's getting blamed for it when we all know the sun has a very long and illustrious history of doing because it. Because the Saudis did it. Cool. Literally, all the all the evidence points to it. Okay. You, you think, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you, you, you think that out of Saudi Arabia and the sun newspaper... I don't know enough. The sun has a higher chance 
of hacking into Jeff Bezos's phone. I mean, then statistically, the Sun has hacked a lot more of people's phones than we know of than Saudi Arabia. I I'm not saying that the Sun that. hacked into Jeff Bezos's phone and pinned the blame on Saudi Arabia. I'm just asking questions. I I I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say horseshit, <laughs> but. It's horseshit. That, right. that, I mean, the, the suggestion that the, the, the Saudis have hacked fewer phones than the Sun is madness I'm, as it is. I mean, that I we, mean they that's hacked all of their fucking people's phones. That's just uh, that we know of. Phones. Do we have evidence that the Saudis have hacked their own people's phones? And mean, how many I of them compared to the be. Sun? I mean, I assume they've got access, and this is only an assumption, of course, mm -hmm. but considering that they're uh, uh, an authoritarian regime... Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe they they haven't hacked them. Maybe they just have access to all of the phones anyway. Yeah. But yeah, it's not yeah, a hack. Yeah, it's a design. They, it's a design mean, feature. It's it's like saying that uh, the sun has hacked more phones than GCHQ. Right. They haven't, because they they once once you have an intelligence service, right. They're going to have hacked Hold vastly on. more. Are you accusing GCHQ of hacking into Jeff Bezos's phone and blaming the Saudis for it? Oh, I mean, just the other day, uh, it, well, no, it's not not the other day. Um, was it last year it came out? A few months ago, uh, it came out that uh, GCHQ has uh, had hacked uh, the Belgian uh, telecoms. Right. Um, and but that was in a uh, leaked EU uh, report on. Um, whether or not, uh, well, basically, on all of the shit stuff that the UK mm. has been doing uh, with uh, their security clearance, and it's not good. No, it's not good. I mean, the idea of trusting the UK with a pet rock at the moment yeah. is quite a worry for the rest of the EU. Not really, because you know we're sitting ducks as far as the EU is concerned. Yes, but we're still going to be doing uh, negotiations, and this was a, a new story uh, from the other week, so I'm not going to go too in depth into it. But we hid seventy-five thousand. Um, well, we hid a, a break in our system of seventy-five thousand uh, reports to the rest of the EU about uh, criminal uh, activity, uh, and we just didn't tell them because uh, we were, we were scared that it would affect our. Uh, oh no, it might affect our relationship yeah, if they know we done fucked it. up. And uh, it came out, and everyone just went. Ah, no, you should have you should have said it, mate. Yeah, you should have you should have said it and probably probably fixed it. Oh. Um, let's. Uh, what what other news story have you brought? Oh, I gave you a list of three and I've forgotten them. Um, I've forgotten my list. What else is on the? I've got I've got lots. Um, the Daily Mail. Uh, mm -hmm. today. Uh, mm. it's on Saturday. Mm. Uh, today they're offering a calendar, mm. free with Saturday's Daily Mail mm. called. Kate's Cuties. Uh, it's a calendar of pictures of William and Kate's children. Now, do you think this is creepy? Yes. Yes. Yeah, unequivocally. I mean, I, I can't comprehend. I, it's, it's, I'm, I mean, I just, I can't even, I'm not sure if it's just like real creepy or a touch paedophilic. So I was really terrified. I don't follow the Daily Mail. I was really terrified that you were about to say that Kate and William, actually, um, they have three cats and the Daily Mail are releasing a calendar featuring these three cats and then I was going to have to be internally conflicted about whether I buy a copy of the Daily Mail to get this calendar of cats in it because that would... I love cats. So that would have been, like, ethically for me, quite dubious because I don't like supporting the Daily Mail. Um, now that I know that it's three children, um, I'm not that bothered. Do they have three kids? I read that they do, but I don't is know if that's true. I don't... Because I know they have a boy and a girl. Do they have another one? Oh, probably. I mean, they're, they're pumping them out all the fucking time, isn't they? they have to, don't they? Oh, God. Awful fucking things. Um, I don't want to go too much into... I don't like giving the royals a lot of attention. <laughs> and I don't like discussing pointless story so mm. we, uh, I haven't discussed uh, Harry and Markle on uh, Megan mm. on here and I ain't gonna okay. and we're not discussing Liam uh, Lawrence Fox either okay there's, there's no point giving these knobheads fucking oxygen sure, 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 sure. but this this fucking offering out a calendar because I do not think that they're working alongside uh, 
uh, William and Kate oh. and like say like here's oh we're, oh, we're doing this and all the money goes here's to some, here's some secret shots that we took of your children. Oh, I mean that's it. Are are William and Kate whoring out their uh, children to the Daily Mail, or is the Daily Mail using children to sell uh, their paper? It might be a mixture of both. I don't like to say whoring out. I think that's a bit unfair. Oh, uh, if you're uh, doing pictures of your kids to get money, then that's whoring out. Um, I don't know how much they're being paid for it. and I They may not be paying, pay, being paid anything. If they're mm. doing it for free and just, hey, everyone, we're going to use a daily mail to give you all calendars yeah. of our fucking kids. It's that's like, creepy as it's bollocks. It's like worse than when... When you've got friends who have got kids and they just post pictures into oh, Facebook. They can fuck you right can off. Just, you can mute those. I guess I can mute the royal family by just not buying the Daily Mail. And the worst of it is it's coming out on the 25th. Who's doing a calendar on the 25th of, of January? January? What mad prick is going, you know, you, you've already missed uh, like a 12 for the fucking uh, uh, of the year anyway. Yeah. Why the fuck are you doing a calendar now? Why didn't you do this in December when people could at least use some of it? Does anyone still use calendars? I, I assume the old do. Yeah, my grandparents have got one that they get from the church. It's got like a, well, the, the one last year had a picture of the Pope. Which one? The current one. The current one. Yeah. The, the the really cool one who's... I mean, he ain't, though, is he? He ain't. He's so progressive. Is he, though? <laughs> is he really? He ain't. I mean, he's progressive compared to previous popes, mm. which is not saying much. No. <laughs> I mean, it's not saying much <sighs> at all. Yeah. Useless fucks. <laughs> uh, where are we? Um, yes. Uh, next piece of news. This is uh, it's, uh, it, this is quite an interesting one, I find. Uh, it's a new UN judgment. Uh, it's from the UN Human Rights Committee, and it's said that it is unlawful for governments to return people to countries where their lives might be threatened by the climate crisis. Now, of course, the problem with this is that the, cl the judgment is not legally binding. Right. So uh, which court has said this? Uh, this is the uh, UN Human Rights Committee. Right, okay. Uh, so it's uh, a judgment from the UN Human Rights Committee, mm. and they've said, because what you will find, especially in islands around New Zealand, yeah. um, because of the rising uh, sea, levels. sea levels, some of these islands are, to put it politely, fucked. Mm. Uh, and so, and because of the heat, and you've seen in Australia, yeah. where the weather and everything else, um, and so... Uh, families have tried to move over to like New Zealand mm. and just go. Well, can, can we live here? They said no, and so it went all mm. the way to the, uh, to the UN. Uh, yeah. And the UN have said, well, it's illegal to do this, but at the same time, the UN don't have any power. Hold on, the UN can't say something's illegal if it isn't well law. unlawful. It's unlawful. What? Yes. But what law well, does it What they've said. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I it's it unlawful. Well, it's yeah. It's hu I mean, I assume they've, they've done it because it's the human rights committee. It's against the uh, uh, human rights or the UN human rights. Okay. But the UN human rights, although. Um, but the human the rights law is legally binding. So in that case, it is okay. Sorry, just so I understand. So it is definitely unlawful for New Zealand or any other country for that matter to turn away someone yes but if they come um from. it's uh it's no well they, they say it's unlawful it doesn't mean it, it's not going to happen like the UN can't force New Zealand to uh accept this don't know uh it's it's one of those weird things with Does regards it, to the so uh, if UN if, um, so, if mean, this was to happen in Britain someone would come into the country they'd get sent back then there'd be an appeal I assume this is the same for New Zealand then there'd be an appeal, and then that would go to the next biggest court. And then if they fail that, then it would go to the next biggest court until it gets to the Human Rights Court. Well, no, because uh, the, human the human... No, because uh, it would never go to the Human Rights uh, In Court. In it would. It, no, because it would, go, it would to go to the European Court of Human Here Rights. it would, yeah. I don't know about New Zealand. Yeah, because the European Court of Human Rights, we're signed up right. uh, for it. With, with regards to like the UN, oh. not everyone signed up to the UN. Uh, it's it's. I would imagine New Zealand would be. Oh uh, no, it is. But it's 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 one of it's one of the things like it's the same with like the the, the Paris Accords and all of this stuff. Uh, it's it's said uh, we're doing this, mm. but you can't actually force anyone to do this. Right. 
Um, it's it's the same with a, uh, human rights. Like you want to, the thing is, like human rights aren't uh, aren't in law. It's we claim that it is, and we like to say that it is, but it's not. This is why Saudi, uh, this is why Syria can use chemical weapons on their own yeah, people and fuck all gets done. So the human it's why genocide can go all around uh, Africa, uh, uh, Myanmar, everything else. Nothing gets done. So human rights laws apply to any country that signs up to the human yes. to the Declaration of Human Rights. Um, does that include citizens of countries? So let's say I was to go and get a job in Syria and then the Syrian government breached my human rights. Does that mean that me as a British citizen could take the Syrian government to court uh, for human rights violations? Um, I mean, I'm I'm not a, a UN lawyer, so the, the short answer is not a fucking clue. Okay. Uh, the longer one would be an assumption would be you could try, but mm. you'll fail. Mm. Why would I fail? Uh, because you won't get Syria into court. Right. Um, okay. Right. And you may die before you think it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right, okay. Oh, that's annoying. Well, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same as, uh, uh, it, I mean, throughout the world, people, I mean, the US, the UK, uh, so many countries have broken human rights mm. laws, yet nothing's happened. Uh, mm. The idea that we have human rights is delightful, but wishy-washy. Yeah, there's a lot of exemptions in it. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, China have three million fucking Muslims in re-education camps, mm. which are basically fucking concentration camps mm. there to uh, uh, fucking brainwash mm. people who do not believe solely in mm. uh, the uh, Chinese Republic. Mm. Like, well, what's been done here? Mm. They've signed up to these uh, human rights and nothing. I mean, Chechnya uh, spent a long time killing gay people. Fuck all happened. Mm. Russia breaking human rights. UK breaking human rights. Human rights is a myth. Mm. It's like the law of war. Uh, it's it's something there to make ourselves feel like we're good people. Yeah, I mean, the human rights laws themselves are... They're tricky because there's so many exemptions. I read the... For a bit of light reading, I recommend the, um, the police officer's handbook, um, PM published by PNLD yeah. and it's got a list of um, the Article of Human Rights and it's not the declaration as I said earlier, Article of Human Rights and then case studies of times where the police have been sued by members of the public and it does happen that mm. people get justice based on the human rights law but yeah I think um, in the majority of cases it's so easy to circumvent. Yeah oh, if I mean if like the UK goes to court mm. well we've lost it's something like 60 plus percent mm. of every court case for human rights violations mm -hmm. that the UK the government mm. has gone into. We're, we're not, we know we break them, and if we're going to get sued for them, mm. we're going to get sued. But all that is is fucking money. Yeah. That's all it is. It's not yeah. changing anything. Like, um, my favorite point with regards to, uh, like the law of war and human rights and stuff is chemical weapons. Mm -hmm. Love, love it because we're so against chemical weapons. Mm. Uh, that was that was meant to be the red line, mm -hmm. the red line. Yeah. Uh, until Syria did it, and then no one did fuck all about it. Mm. Um, but one of the chemical weapons that is illegal to use in war is tear gas. Mm. Not allowed to use it in war. Right. But you are allowed to seemingly use it on your own people. On your own people. If you're police, mm. like, where does it make sense? All, all, all any uh, uh, human right or law of war is there is there to basically trick the people into thinking that someone gives a fuck about them. Yeah, it's interesting when you think about what the purpose of that war would be. Like, why civilians? What message is that sending? Why these civilians? Why this method? what financial incentive or whatever incentive it is, it doesn't have to be financial, what's the incentive here to go to war with someone um, and why is the cost of human life acceptable within that? And that's that's interesting. Is there ever a reason to go to war? Well, lots of people have justifications for going to war. Well, yeah, but I mean, if they were all in the room, I'd ask them individually, but yeah. you're here, so what is your opinion Me on it? Me personally? No, I don't think there should be any reason to You don't think there is war. ever a reason? My personal view, yeah. I no, I don't. Especially the way that we do go into war in this country is that there is a class element to it where we take our working class young men and we go and put them in war zones where they see the most horrific, horrendous things, killing other young working class men from those countries. And I just don't... And, and for what? 
and that's there's there's a phenomenal amount of um at its most basic unfairness in the system of war mm-hmm. and i just fundamentally disagree with it okay so um let's say afghanistan was wrong mm-hmm. iraq wrong what what was the term uh, that went into the iraq war uh d- lies uh, oh, right. oh yeah well that was weapons of mass dis- yeah. destruction oh yeah that was bollocks yeah. that was that was the first protest that i ever went to yeah, there was the, was the, the million, the huge one. Yeah, the million people march. Yeah, it yeah, and it did nothing. All. It was such um, a disappointment. God, oh, I mean, it made me chuckle. Mm. Um, Kosovo. That was Kosovo was where they were killing Muslims. Uh, that was the yeah. intervention uh, Muslims, for the mm. Balkan War or Balkans War. I don't know all the context well, of this. Well, let's see. This is. I mean, it's. I'm very much uh, ifs and buts with regards to whether or not intervention is a good thing. Yeah. For certain things, yes, I think that I think you almost have to. Uh, it's, uh, Syria, it's a prime example. If you're using chemical weapons on your people, someone has to stop it. Yeah, so there's a difference between intervention and full-scale war, though. But you, it, I mean, one will almost always uh, lead to another. Right, but there's still two different issues. So whilst I would disagree with war, I have no issue with intervention. But intervention was uh, the reason, was the excuse used to go into Iraq. Right, but if that was lies, then, oh, then, no, it's, no, not, then no, it's not I, a I war, though, like is it? Yeah, but... Uh, if it was yeah, just about intervention... It started intervention, as intervention, and then it all go into... But there's I mean, two different questions. You asked me my opinions on war, but actually, if we're talking about intervention, and I've got no problem with that... When it f- when it falls into actual full scale war, when there's no ability to negotiate or to have any kind of discussion with the people that are breaching human rights or doing whatever they're doing on their own people, then that is a separate issue going into war from the initial intervention. How long does intervention need to go on until it becomes a war? Then, well, or I'm is it a time frame? Was it just like a, a change in attitude? Um, so, if you are staging an intervention on a country that is abusing their own people, mm-hmm. and this country is refusing to stop doing that, then I think it should be totally acceptable to open borders to refugees from those countries to get them out as safely as possible. And if that country then chooses to invade your home country that is allowing all these refugees in, then I think it's right that we defend ourselves um, but that isn't the same as aggressively going into war, sending soldiers out with guns to kill soldiers from another country. That's a different issue. Mm. They're linked, definitely, but but from my own ethics, they have to be two separate issues. Well, you can only work on your own ethics, you know? Mm. I mean, this is the thing, there isn't, especially with this type of subject, there isn't a wrong answer. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'll just say that there, there are wrong answers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all war is great. Yes. That would be a wrong answer. Yeah, all yeah. war is great, and mm. I love to get erect when I they're love blood. War. Uh, that's yeah. the wrong answer. Yeah. Um, is intervention the right word? Because when I hear intervention, I imagine a group of friends. <laughs> All just around going, mate, Palmina, stop drinking. you need to stop drinking. Just, just uh, going in, like getting fucking a sad into a room, mate. You're going to have to stop this fucking genocide, mate. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I just, I just love you, genocide. I'm not going to genocide not, everyone, I'm, just uh, these ones. I'm not going the same way as, 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 as fucking Saddam. You can't make me. Mm. You can't make me. Yeah. Um, we can't make you, but we can remove the thing. I've got it all under control. Yeah, um, I mean, there's other um, elements as well that um, if you are from a minority that is being abused in a country that is, you know, torturing. Let's, um, yeah, uh, I don't want to pick any one particular country, but if you're I mean, there's from, so many. yeah, if you're from a minority that is being abused by your government, um, I do think that the UK has a responsibility to take those people in. Why? Why does the UK have a responsibility? Because we're a peaceful country and because it's I mean, the right what, thing to what, do. What part of our history suggests that we're a peaceful country? Well, we like to say that we're a peaceful country and by and large, living in Britain is quite peaceful for most people. I like to say people. I'm a cunt, but I'm delightful. Mm, you are. You know, mm. I mean, we all, we all like to say things that aren't true. Yeah, um, but we have the infrastructure, we have the money, we can support people that are just trying to live. You know, the refugees that come in aren't trying to do anything dramatic. They're just trying to live. But the suggestion that we have uh, the infrastructure, mm. do, you, do you truly believe that if we've got, uh, we've got a the rise money. in food banks? But even with the we've got the money to pay for people to not have to use food banks. Yeah, but 
if we do not, if if we're at a point in society where I agree that we have the mm. money to do it, but we do not have a system, a government, uh, enough care in place mm. to uh, have our own people, as it were, which is mm. a terrible fucking line that I hear lots of times go, oh, we should look after our own first. Yeah. I agree with you. We have the ability mm. to make sure that everyone has a house, that everyone has enough food to eat, mm -hmm. that no one goes hungry, but... The facts are, we've got 14 million people in poverty mm. and over 1 million people in extreme poverty. Mm. Yet, you uh, 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 are saying, and I, uh, the thing is, I don't think you're wrong mm. in the sense that we should do. I just do not think we have the structure in place because we do not want the structure yeah. in place. We're choosing not to put that structure in place. And uh, I think that just makes us cunts. And we don't have to be cunts. We didn't have to vote the Conservatives in. We didn't have to um, vote against even our own interests. You know, the the number of people that are actually benefiting from conservative policies is tiny. Um, yes. And people voted for that. People knowingly voted for that. So, um, but I still think that we have a responsibility to let refugees in. I mean, I, yeah, I would, I would say, I would, I would, I would make you right uh, mm -hmm. that we do have a responsibility. I'm not sure that bringing refugees to this country at the moment to put them into unsafe environments is the fucking it, it is is the answer. There's that also would be my most uh, of the people who come into this country um, as refugees and as migrants just generally are of working age. They're really happy to work. There are restrictions placed on them about how and where they can get a job. Yes. Qualifications that aren't um, recognised over here, so they have to redo all those qualifications, which cost money, which they're not allowed to earn because they're not allowed it's to oh no, work. Yes. It, it, so I there's mean, all the of those. The whole system is designed against them, uh, which could be overhauled quite easily. And I would expect a conservative government that's in favour of business would also be in favour of they're overhauling not, those. Not of well, let's let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Boris Johnson literally said, "Fuck business." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm, <just laughs> I'm giving no one the benefit of the doubt oh. when they come out and say fuck business. Yeah. Um. What a missed opportunity. <laughs> but also, so my point is that a lot of the people that are coming over are really enthusiastic about working. We've got jobs that need doing. You know, some of them are quite menial. Um, you know, there's there's um, a lot of vacancies in care work and social work. Yes. Um, and you know agriculture there's a lot of jobs that are there that Brits um, either aren't able or don't particularly want to do so for me letting in refugees giving them the right to work and the right to earn their way they're not asking for anything particularly dramatic they just want to live and then the plus side of that is once we've brought them in and they're doing all these jobs um, they're contributing to the economy yeah and I just think I just don't see any downsides to letting migrants in uh, I mean, I wouldn't suggest that there are many mm. um, at all, because uh, but it's it's all with regards to how it's seen. Yeah. As I say, we we currently don't have the structure for caring enough about ourselves. And my only concern, and I want, I firm believer in uh, bringing in certainly more refugees, mm -hmm. child refugees. The fact that this week we voted against the law, it was the Doves Act. Mm. Uh, and not only did uh, our government vote against allowing child refugees in, but allowing child refugees after Brexit to get in with their, to see their parents again, mm. it's fucking Vile. It's awful, yeah. But I just think that we need a government in place that is going to actually care. Because at mm. the moment, all you're going to do is put more children in danger, yeah. um, and uh, more adults into uh, into danger. And I do not. Or I mean, if it's less danger than what they would be in in somewhere else, mm. fine. One of the most infuriating things about being an adult in 2020 is having literally no idea what our government cares about truly because yeah. they because they're not consistent in what they say no. and which makes it really difficult to understand what um persuasive arguments you can use to try and get them on board with something that is morally you know quite a good course of action because they constantly shift and that's that's really infuriating i think regardless of your political persuasion um, I think, and actually going back to God, um, the reason that we have so many different interpretations of 
um, the basic Abrahamic faith. <laughs> so I talk about God when you look at your watch. I feel like I'm with my granddad. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, but uh, the reason that we have so many interpretations is because individuals who follow those religions think that they have a better idea of what God wants than the person that's currently saying so. And that's the same thing with people who vote for a particular government, is yeah. that everyone thinks that they know what that, what that political party um, is in favour of. But actually, with the Conservative Party, and there's probably an element of that with the Labour Party, in w with all the parties, that you don't really know what their priority is because of the way that our media interviews them and the way that the structures run. So it's, re it's really difficult to know whether the Conservative Party is a party of business or it's a party of anti-immigration or it's a party of independence or it's a party of homeowning. You know, you have no idea what they actually yeah. are um, in favour of because... It keeps shifting. No, I d yeah. I mean, also there's shit. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. We're coming. It. We're coming towards the end. Sure. So, do you have any? Uh, do you remember any of the uh, it was, stories? It was um, the French, uh, the French lawyers that decided to do the hacker, and uh, someone quite senior in New Zealand, who's from um, a, a town or city where. Um, you know, the hacker is like a core part of their cultural a, identity. A, a, a Maori tribe or something. Something like that. Yeah. Um, they've said, look, this is blatantly cultural appropriation. And then he wrote a very reasoned um, argument of why this is cultural appropriation, why it makes a mockery of the dance. And then there's some kind of debate right now about whether um, the French lawyers are allowed to do this. And if you watch the video, it's not a hacker. It's like just them prancing around, sticking their tongues out. It's really ridiculous. And um, mm. so I thought we could end on a light topic, cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation is an interesting one because I think there's, there's there's a part of me that considers uh, that uh, culture is almost utterly fucking pointless. Um, I think it's one of the one of the most tedious things in the fucking world. Says the guy with the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, but this isn't fucking culture, <laughs> mate. <laughs> Listen, I mean, this, this, is, this is basically me attempting to not have a fucking nervous breakdown every week. Um, and sometimes fucking failing, I'll be honest. <laughs> but, I mean, like, if you do something with respect, yep. fine. Mm. If you do something to take the piss out of it, awful. If you do something that, frankly, you know in yourself is not for you... Don't fucking do it. Yeah, so there's also um, the thing that is sort of a stumbling block for a lot of people is removing good intentions from harmful impacts. Yes. And so there's a big thing of saying, well, I didn't mean it like that, therefore it's not offensive. But actually, when the this very senior um, New Zealander says, look, you were literally doing like this, <laughs> then you, yeah, you that's offensive you have regardless to of your intentions. Yeah, you have to consider it yeah. of how it will be seen oh, absolutely. when you're not there to say it's not racist. Yeah, that's, that's such it. a good way of putting it. If, yeah. if in a hundred years someone's going to look at it and you're not going to be there going, oh, it's not racist, uh, yeah. how are they going to fucking see it? Because yeah. if it's you and a bunch of French lads yeah. going along attempting to do the oh, fucking hacker... It was so awkward. No one's going to look at that. And, and yeah. it's, it's the same that I uh, say with uh, uh, like comedians. Mm. You know, say, well, wait, you're doing this joke, you're going to say you're doing it for irony purposes... Mm -hmm. Now, in 50 years, when you're dead and someone looks over it, will they see the irony? Mm. If they do not see the irony, then what you're doing there is just racism. Yeah. That's it. You go, oh, well, the thing is, is all black people should die. Yeah. I was being ironic, like, but no one's okay. going to fucking but see yeah, that irony. And also, even when you say something controversial like that, there is, uh, you have to have a really strong um, message that sends out that you are very clearly joking. Yes. And that's the, the issue with uh, nuance, is that a lot of it is lost on people. And you'll never get nuance typing. No. You'll never get <laughs> nuance typing. It's very difficult. I mean, yeah. like, it, it's, one of the, it's one of the things that, truly, that I absolutely despise about... Um, like Twitter and stuff. Mm. I have deleted so many things. I go, da -da 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 -da. That, that's funny. Nope, nope, yeah. that's, nope, no. Nope. You're not going to get what's going on up mm. here to make that worth it. Mm. Um, so have you got anything to plug? 
No, at the moment. Um, the Marlborough Theatre, which is where I work, um, we're doing a touring show called New Queers on the Block. It's live performance art. It's not really comedy, but it's wonderful. Oh, God, live performance art. Oh, I love it. It's up there with sketch and improv. That oh, is good. Yeah. God oh, it's in way heaven. better than that. This is high art. Go. This go is Arts to Council funded, darling. Go to see whatever she said, <laughs> said there. Um, Christ. <laughs> well, <laughs> I want to, on that fucking note, um, the, qu the, the couple of stories that uh, we didn't get around to, uh, which is, uh, let's have a look, That's, that was old news. Uh, there's uh, people are thinking about moving the House of Lords to York or Birmingham, which is a fucking stupid idea. Um, Rolls-Royce are currently working on a new engine called the Ultrafan. Uh, which will be quicker and more energy efficient, which is one of the more useful things to happen in aerospace at the moment. Uh, the Welsh Assembly has joined the Scottish Parliament and the Northern Ireland Assembly in rejecting the Brexit bill. Didn't matter though, still went through. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, Big Pharma are continuing to walk away uh, from investing in new antibiotics and there is alarmingly few uh, useful new drugs, so look forward to that when you're dying. Uh, that's bullshit. <laughs> that's bullshit. The government has uh, said that a new terror, the uh, the terror offenders, uh, will uh, spend more time in jail. Uh, they've also brought out. They're going to in the next couple of weeks. Going to bring out a new terror law, which is like the 98th terror law they've brought out in the past four days. It means fuck all. It would be interesting um, to see what crosses the threshold into terrorism as well. Because they're uh, starting it'll, to it'll say like... It will be anything. I mean, yeah. it will be, once you start saying the mm. government's bad, Pretty Patel can go fuck herself and Boris Johnson can go and jump off something high. Did you just do a terrorism? Uh, I, I, f <laughs> I fucking hope so. <laughs> I could all choke on me cock, mate. Every uh, file fucks. Good God. Um... Fuck them. Oh, they piss me off so much. Uh, over in Turkey, the ruling party uh, is attempting, uh, they're attempting to bring in, a, for the second time, a new law that would, get, uh, ra would grant rapists an amnesty if they marry their victims, uh, which is going to be fan-fucking-tastic. Uh, what if their victims are men? Uh, then they're not going to be able to do it because it's all about children. This right, is right. it's about young children, about child marriage. But okay. we didn't have time to get through it, otherwise we would talk about that. Um, uh, and uh, that's the Church of England. That's a doomsday clock, and we're done. I want to thank my guest. And as always, you can watch my shows at the bottom of whatever the fuck's there, and you'll also get uh, everyone's Twitter and all of that shit. Goodbye.